Hello everyone, this is Turd Flinging Monkey, and I want to show you probably the most important chart about politics you'll ever see. And I'm not even exaggerating that. This chart really opened my eyes into a lot of things. It explains a lot of things. It makes a lot of things make sense that didn't make sense before. And it points a way forward. So all of that in this tiny little chart. In fact, it's so tiny, I'm going to blow it up just a bit so we can actually go through it and, you know, read it. So let's make this a little bit bigger. All right, this is called the political triangle. I, did, I honestly don't know where this triangle came from. I saw it in a Charlemagne video. I'll post a link to the video. It's called the political trichotomy. I'm going to refer to this as the political trichotomy. Okay, so here we have the left versus the right. You could see this line in the middle, roughly where the word democracies appears. And you could see that it's a triangle. Now, this may confuse you if you're used to seeing things like the uh, political compass, where you have uh, four quadrants. And this is something, again, this is something that this chart explained and made clear, which wasn't clear before. Think about the political quadrants. Where is the libertarian left? Have you met a libertarian leftist? I haven't. What I see is I see there are Marxists who just want free shit, who we roughly approximate as the libertarian left. And then we have the Marxists who want to bash the fash, take everyone's rights away. They're the same. They're on the same team. There's no qualitative difference between them. One of them is just, I don't know, lazier. Maybe they don't approve of the tactics of the other, but they're certainly willing to go along with them and benefit from them. But compare that to the right. The right is as far apart from each other as it is from the left. While the left is made up of, you have communism. On the right, you have individualism and capitalism. And the lower right, you have absolutism. These are as far apart from each other as they are from the left. And this is why the right is divided. And this is also why... Whenever I go to a libertarian group or wherever I talk about libertarian issues, there's no leftist there. In fact, almost every survey I've seen lumps libertarians in with the right. Now, this confused me if you think of the whole quadrant system. If there's a libertarian left and a libertarian right, where's the libertarian left? Why is there no libertarians in the Democrat Party? What the hell happened to the libertarian left? This chart explains this. There is no libertarian left. There's the left... And then there's the right, which is divided. There's nothing wrong with this, by the way. This is just the way things are. And it actually makes all the sense in the world. But because we have a left-right dichotomy, a false dichotomy, we tend to try to make things fit what we understand until we find a better way of viewing things, which is what this chart provides, a better way of viewing things. All right, so let's look at this one at a time. Let's start with individualism. This is what I would consider myself. A individualist capitalist so you know I believe in small government there's a little quote at the top under individualism human freedom from the collective is the ultimate value and I I agree with that here's what's really interesting and I didn't even think about this before so individualism and communism share a belief in republicanism which in the chart is defined as the state shall recognize no inherent hierarchy or caste this is why this is interesting when I've talked to people on the alt-right, they told me, and this blew my mind, I'm like, are you retarded? They told me that capitalism was a Jewish conspiracy, and that capitalism and individualism leads to communism. And I'm looking at them with like my head sideways, and I'm like, what? Are you stupid? Of course they don't. There's no way individualism and capitalism leads to communism. In fact, you fucking fascist retards over there, you're, you're the communists, you're both socialists. International socialism, national socialism, it's the same goddamn thing. And then the communists are like, you're all Hitler. All of you are Hitler. Everybody's Hitler but me. Now, this doesn't make sense on its face, but it does when you understand this chart. Because to a far-right absolutist, the people like the people on the alt-right, in fact, down here in the, the bottom right corner, you have monarchism, fascism, czarism, nationalism. There you go. So to them... When they see the individualist right and the communist left, they don't believe the state should recognize inherent hierarchy or caste. They see them as the same thing because we live in a false left versus right dichotomy. The far right, this is kind of thing like the far right is actually the absolutist right 
and then there's the libertarian right, then there's the left. The alt-right, or the absolutist right, sees individual capitalism and communism as the same thing because it's not them. It's an us-versus-them dichotomy. Just like individualists, capitalists like myself see fascism and communism as basically the same thing because they both infringe on the rights of the individual. Whether it's a global government or a national government, if you're trampling on my rights, it doesn't really matter, does it? If I'm in the 99% under a monarch or I'm in the 49% in a democracy, it's pretty much the same thing. This little triangle in the middle with the little blue dots, that's the Overton window or as the chart describes, mainstream politics. So this Overton window you can see is as far from monarchy and nationalism as you could possibly be. And this is by design because in the United States, the United States was founded on a rejection of monarchy. And what's interesting is um, the czars, czarism and the czars, they're the, like the peakest peak of absolutism. And that led to Marxism. And it makes sense when you think about it. When you understand this chart, you understand why these swings happen in, in politics. When one system doesn't work, there is a propensity in history to go to the complete opposite system. So if this system failed, obviously its polar opposite will totally work. The opposite of a failed system may in fact be another failed system. For example, while the Tsarism of Russia certainly had its problems, I wouldn't say Marxism was a step up. It's just a different kind of shit. Likewise, I will fully admit that anarcho-capitalism, which is the highest ideal of the individualist capitalist, is completely unsustainable in reality because of human nature. And I keep talking about human nature, and this is very interesting. Another thing about this chart. This is something that the right has universally in common. You have the individualist capitalists, and you have the absolutist nationalist you know, guys down here. What do they have in common? Darwinism they have Darwinism in common. This is where we can come together. So it says on the chart, competition leads to progress, winners get rewarded and go on to create more success while losers have to reinvent themselves or vanish. I believe in this, absolutely. This is why I oppose feminism. This is why I oppose social justice because it's a bunch of egalitarian bullshit. And the alt-right, the absolutist right, they also believe in Darwinism. I mean, talk to a guy on the alt-right about race realism. That's why they're so like big into race realism, because they understand Darwinism is a thing. And this is what can unite the right against the left. You're never going to convince individualist capitalists to embrace national socialism. It's just not going to fucking happen. Because as far as we're concerned, you're just as bad as the communists. So to us, you are the same. Just like... To you, individual capitalists are the same as communists. And to communists, individual capitalists and fascists are the same, which is why everyone is Hitler. This also explains a lot of things I never understood before that made no sense. Now they make perfect sense. Why does the alt-right blame Jews for everything? Well, Jews tend to be in banking and Hollywood and entertainment. Individual capitalism. However... Historically, especially, a lot of famous communists were also Jews. So the alt-right sees Jews in charge of banks and, and entertainment companies. They also see a lot of famous Jews supporting Marxism. And what do they conclude? Well, obviously, the individual capitalist and the communists are the same thing. And you see Jews in both camps. It must be the Jews. Likewise, what does the far left see? They see white people. Most CEOs in the United States are, are white people. So they see white people running Wall Street. They see white people as the CEOs of major businesses. And they also see white people, you know, advocating for segregation, uh, ethno states and shit like that. So they conclude, well, the problem's obviously white people. Now, the individualist capitalist right doesn't blame a particular race because that whole individualism thing. But... The individualist right does blame fascism and communism, basically sees them as synonymous. Which isn't really true, I'll admit. This is something I actually learned from this chart. Fascism and communism isn't the same thing. But when you look at it from the false dichotomy of left versus right, both the individualist capitalist right and the nationalist, you know, what we would call the far right, see themselves as the true right. And they see the other side, the other part of the right, as part of the left. 
So individualist capitalist libertarians see the nationalist fascist loving right as part of the left. And the left sees them both as fascists. It's fucking retarded. But this is the consequence of having a false political dichotomy when in reality we have a political trichotomy. Now what can we do about this political trichotomy? Is there a better system we can have in order to better reflect reality? Well, sure. We can get rid of the two-party system. We could have like a parliamentary system. We can have further, you know, divisions on power with more checks and balances. Because honestly, as I said earlier, if you go too far in one direction, things start to break down. Too much anarcho-capitalism, Darwinism kicks in and, you know, things get bad. Too much czarism and then you're going to have rebellion. Too much communism and everybody starves to death. The extremes are never good. The question to ask isn't how do we resolve this conflict once and for all. I don't think that's possible. I think that you'll always have this triangle. They'll always see each other as the enemy, and when one of them gets too powerful, the other will unite against them. Back in the day of monarchy, when the absolutist right effectively had the power, what happened? The individualist capitalist right and the communist left worked together. Now, I don't, communism didn't exist back then. This was basically religion. Communism has replaced religion, by the way. I'll, I'll talk about that later. I'm researching another video about that. But back in the day, before Leninism and Marxism, this was basically Christianity. And if you look at the values of communism, and you look at the values of progressivism, it's simply applied Christianity. But now that we live in a, a postmodern, atheist world, Marxism, Leninism, this has replaced the church and Christianity as this, this point of the triangle. But it, there's always been a triangle. Anyway, the point is, when kings were abusing their power, the individual capitalist and the church kind of like worked against them. And when the individualist and the capitalist got out of hand, the status and the religious body, they worked together to put a stop to them. So this will always happen. These three groups are always going to hold themselves in check whenever one of them gets too powerful. Right now, the left is too powerful. And the reason why it's so powerful is because the right is divided. So I think step one to defeating the left is we have to not necessarily put our differences aside and just join the same team because that's not going to happen. Again, the, the capitalist individual's right is as far away from the nationalist right as it is from communism. These two points are never going to meet, but there is common ground. We can, we can agree about Darwinism. We can agree that races aren't created equal, genders aren't created equal, and that hierarchies and winners and losers are going to happen. This is ultimately good for society and humanity. That's how evolution works. The strong and the fit reproduce, the weak and the unfit die. Progress. Now the left absolutely hates that, which is why everyone is Hitler. Because didn't Hitler believe in evolution? Obviously anyone who believes in evolution is Hitler. Well, don't you believe in evolution? <sighs> Well, shut up, you're a racist. Anyway, um, there's this very interesting chart. This really explains a lot. This really made a lot of things clear. It helped me understand things in a different way. I wanted to share this with you. I don't really know exactly where this chart came from, like I said, but I think it's really good to understand uh, a lot of things. Now, before I go, I just want to point out that there are some examples of like modern governments or modern states or modern politicians on this chart. Now, you may disagree or agree where these go, but as you can see, in the very center of the triangle is Putin. Putin, apparently, modern Russia, is an example of a kind of a, a state which is in the middle of the triangle, a balanced state. Whether you agree or disagree with that, that's for further research, further uh, discussion. But according to the person who made this chart, who's obviously pretty smart, he put Putin in the center. So maybe that's worth looking into. Anyway, I thought this was interesting. So I wanted to share this with you. This is Turd Flingy Monkey. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.